Hi there, me, your humble, friendly neighborhood stroke assaulter. So today we're going to discuss um, being self-conscious in public. I've noticed it come up as a thread on one of the groups I belong to on Facebook. And you know what? Let me adjust the camera here. Um, I know it's a thing because I'm self-conscious. So the day you had your stroke, a little part of you died that day. Just a little bit. Um, forgiving the actual brain damage and you've now got a hunk of dead brain in your brain. Um, the little part of you died that day. Was it communication? Was it mobility? Was it, you know, speech language? Was it, <clears throat> you know, so many things, right? Do you now have vision problems? Do you now have like, fill literally pick a blank, fill it in. What problem could you possibly have? On top of that, after a stroke, there's an extreme sense of anxiety. And that anxiety is completely normal. And it's not something you just need to get over. And for those of you around someone that's supporting someone after their stroke, um, if you ever use the term, you just need to get over it, please put your fucking head in a blender and turn it on. Because um, for this isn't something you just get over, right? Um, and so you're kind of self-conscious for many reasons. Like, especially now you've got to go out into the world to get a thing. We'll call that thing groceries, right? So, do you now have a wheelchair, a walker, a cane? Do you now have a support therapy animal? Do you now have, you know, vision issues? Uh, be it you now have low vision or, or distorted, disturbed vision, or in my case, do you need sunglasses under fluorescent and harsh lighting, you know? Do you have a memory issue, right? Um, are you easily confused? So... These are some of the things that people that have had a stroke <clears throat> tend to be highly self-conscious about. I am self-conscious about my deficits because I notice them. To me, I know when things are starting to go wonky. You might not even know it. Um, in fact, it might be so subtle at times until it tips that curve and you notice it. So the other day I was out grocery shopping and I ran into two people from work. Now, granted, I haven't seen these people for almost five, five and a bit months, maybe. And if I have run into them, it's over five months, maybe it's been a total of an hour I've seen them. I couldn't remember their names. I've known these people for at least a year and a half before my stroke. Haven't seen them in five months. I should know your names. I should have an idea of what we call you. I didn't. I couldn't remember. And I'm just so glad during the conversation it never came up. Like, hey, you know my name. I'm like, mm, I'd have to say no. You know, uh, I know what it's like to be in a restaurant and you're about to order something and you've had a conversation for two or three minutes about what you intend to order. And then the wait staff shows up and magically it's like, nope. It's like someone obliviated your memory for you Harry Potter fans out there. Yep. Like it's, it's like an act of self-obliviation. Um... Then consider consider that you now have new deficits, difficulties to, to, to adapt to. And you're anxious about some of those and, and will they ever depart your life in, in entirety. But you're also concerned about how you're going to be perceived in public or you know, for me, it's not a sense of embarrassment because I, I, I don't get embarrassed for the situations that, that present myself now after my stroke but are people truly going to be empathetic and truly understanding about you know what you now have to go through so do you have a walker do you have a wheelchair do you have a support therapy animal right that, or do you have a cane that is now part of your out in public existence do you have to have new glasses special glasses sunglasses um you know, do you have to have someone to guide you um, because of your post-stroke realities? Um, do you have communication deficits, either ingoing or outcoming? Um, you know, like, is there a problem there with either effectively getting your message out to the world or effectively receiving the message from the world? You know, um, after a stroke, you could also now have dementia. You could now also have a major mental health issue like schizophrenia because of brain damage. You could now have bipolar disorder, schizoaffective disorder. You could now have agoraphobia. Like, 
pick a situation that could legitimately present itself after a stroke, and, and you could literally possibly put that into the blank, right? And it, it's a shitty deal, right? It's a shitty, shitty deal. Because for those of you that had a major mobility impact, well, people that, people that knew you six weeks ago might have known you've had a stroke or not, and then you run into it in the grocery store. And they see you in a, wa a walker, or they see you in a wheelchair, or you now have a cane, and or a support animal. I'm like, well, what happened? Well, why I had a stroke. Now you got to explain that all over again. <clears throat> For people like me, I, I, I do still have mobility issues, and I am highly conscious of them. And I, I do what I can every single day to overcome them. Some days better than others. However, you would never know I had a stroke just to look at me. If you really knew me before the stroke, you can spot the differences. You, you can completely, totally spot the differences in, my, in the way I move. Um, it's, and when I start to get a bit befuddled or confused, my movement devolves. Like, like the way I move through a room devolves. Um, and it's... It's just a stroke thing, right? And again, there's 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 no way to quote unquote get over it. And for those of you that wish to walk up to someone that had a stroke and, and use the term "get over it," please put your head in a blender and turn it the fuck on. Um, because it's not something to get over. This is brain damage, right? This is you have an injury to your brain that is now making a little bit of your life difficult. For me, I have to wear sunglasses and contacts under fluorescent lights. Do I like wearing sunglasses and contacts under fluorescent lights? No, not at all. Um, am I self-conscious about it? A little bit. Am I getting used to it? Yeah. Um, I went out with uh, a coworker for a couple of beverages the other night, and what would essentially be considered my local, right? And staff at Kensington's is just, they've been brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I, I have no concerns with them at all. However, somewhat after my stroke, when I still had a major communication deficit, I walked into a local distributor of hot caffeinated beverages, and the lady behind the counter basically said I was joking and I was lying. So I basically discontinued my relationship with that retailer. Um, because, you know, I don't need to be discriminated against. Um, <clears throat> what I don't, what I don't have the problems with, like major mobility issues, I, I don't have a wheelchair, I don't have a walker, uh, some days I probably might need a cane, still thinking maybe need a support animal, I'm not sure about that one yet. Um, I, I can only imagine what it takes for you to get ready, both mentally and and physically get ready to leave your place of residence to go out into the world and do things, right? How, how much effort does it take? Right? Some people, right, they are going to need to take some kind of anti-anxiety medication before they get out in the world, um, or maybe take it when they get home, or maybe both. Um, some people, you know, may start to develop I want to say PTSD, but it's not really... Well, I guess it could be a form of PTSD. They, they develop a, a form of sort of PTSD because of their stroke, which becomes like agoraphobia. You don't want to go outside because you are just too scared, too afraid, too emotionally and mentally disheveled from having to go out into the world and be stared at and, and pointed and, and maybe snickered or laughed at or mocked, right? Because um, I have to wear sunglasses under fluorescent lights and go to the grocery store at nine o'clock at night and I'm walking to the store I don't need my sunglasses on necessarily when I get into the store or just as I'm about to enter the store I put my sunglasses on right so and that's not anyone's fault right it's a thing um am I self-conscious about it yeah a little bit now if I had other things going on, so I know when I'm starting to get confused. I've learned that lesson a couple times the hard way. 
so I, I am constantly vigilant about sort of where I'm at when I'm shopping. And, and I, I've learned the point of no return where it's like, we're done. And there have been a couple occasions where I've just left the store, left my basket, and we're like, I, don't, I do not have the mental acuity to finish the checkout process. Or in other cases, I've stopped shopping, checked out, and, and gone home immediately. And again, that's because I know when things are starting to get difficult for me, and, and I, I, I don't want to end up in a more difficult space after that happens. So I've taken some little bit of self-responsibility and decided, you know, when it gets to a certain point, I'm just going to pull the pin and go home. Now, what can you do to help someone, for those of you that are supporting the stroke assaulter, with them and their social anxiety and how self-conscious and self-aware they are when they're out in public? One, just accept that things are different. Just accept that on the day of their stroke, part of them died, right? Whatever that may be, it might be their level of mobility it might be their eyesight it might be again whatever it is two don't argue that fact right don't try to argue the fact that they don't need help or they don't need help the way they're asking for it right how the fuck do you know you don't you have no clue what they need and, and in some cases after the stroke the individual that's had the stroke, I'll be honest, they don't even know what they need because I've been there. Um, if they happen to have a moment where things get spotty, be it with vision, memory, mobility, language, just ignore it. Just just don't even point it out. Just let it, let it go. Just let it go. Right? Um, now, that doesn't mean don't pay attention to these things because if you start to have a significant number of of them in a very short period of time and it is completely outside their presentation before that there might be another neurological event going on right but that is the decision you as the individual have to make about your loved one how well do you know them and whatnot so i've been there where you're in a restaurant and you've had a 10 minute conversation about what you want for dinner and then the wait staff shows up and you're like i don't know I have no, I have no idea. I, I know I've had a conversation about it. I, I couldn't tell you what I want. I mean, I've been in a situation where um, you're in a food court in a mall and you have no idea what you want to eat, and it takes you 15 minutes to decide. And I basically stumbled from counter to 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 counter, to counter, to counter having no clue. And I finally just grasped at straws and made a decision, and it was food. Right. There may be times where you may need to intervene, right, and, and, and give a, a helping hand. However, your first inclination might be to come to the rescue and, on your, and, and be that white knight and help them out. Well, don't. Unless they're about to seriously cause themselves some injury, don't. What's worse? Them trying to trip through the experience come out the other side and realize their own deficits or them trying to, you know, fight through the experience. And when they fit, when they finally figure out how to get through it, you come to their aid. Right. Um, things like finishing sentences don't. Right. Things like assuming what they need don't. Right. Um, so, and that, that's how you as the individual that's helping someone through their post stroke journey can help them. Because trust me, you are you as the stroke assaulter are self-conscious enough about your own deficits, difficulties, your dilemmas, right? I know what my world's going to look like as soon as I open that door. Right? I know the difficulties that are going to present in my world as soon as I open that door. I know what my world's going to be like again when I get back through that door from being in the world. The only difficulty is I don't know exactly what's going to happen when I'm in the world. Right? Am I gonna am I, am I gonna have a mobility issue and fall? Am I gonna magically start stuttering again? Am I gonna magically start having word finding issues again? Am I is my memory gonna hold out? You know, like 
there are so many so many dilemmas that present someone that's had a stroke right? that make that person be self-conscious about their own situation and again anxiety after a stroke is completely normal and you should seek counseling for it like I have and I, but then again I'm no exemplar of what to do after a stroke and I don't purport to be so um, but for those of you that have had the stroke being self-conscious about how you interact with the world is totally normal completely totally 100% normal allowing your level of anxiety, your your anxiety, your level of lack of self-control over certain things, or your level of frustration and fear, dictate how and when you'll interact with the world. No, don't don't be that person. Right? Find the obstacle, defeat the obstacle. Find the obstacle, defeat the obstacle. Look for new work. Right? And, and I appreciate that some of those days they are going to be absolutely just fantastically shitty. Right? But if, if you allow your deficits, your difficulties, and your dilemmas to control you on how, when, where you're able to interact with the world, I'm going to be honest, you're going to get stuck at home. And you're going to get stuck at home a lot. And then by the time you're ready to get out into the world, it might be too late. Right? Um, for those of you, again, supporting someone that's going through the throes of a stroke, just be present, just be patient, and just actively listen to what they say. Right? Because, and I realize this video ties into uh, social stigma and stroke, right? When you've had the stroke, you are very, very self-conscious about how you present um, out in the world, right? And it's difficult, right? Uh, I'm, I'm incredibly lucky. Uh, that is a bit of a double-edged weapon at times because people may not believe I've had a stroke, but fuck them. Um... And I appreciate completely that there are going to be occasions whereby, you know, I, I may become overconscious of my specific situation, which may prohibit certain social interaction because I'm just too concerned about it. And, and when that moment comes up, it'll come up and I'll, I'll deal with it then. With that being said, right, just keep in mind that being self-conscious about how you present in public after your stroke is, is completely normal. Right, allowing that sense of fear, that sense of anxiety, to control how you go into the world, not normal. You, you, if you get to that point, please immediately seek some form of professional counseling help. Right, and on that note, I'm going to land the plane. So, if you happen to enjoy, you've been watching over the past five and a bit months. Right, uh, please like, share, subscribe. Leave comments down below. If there's something that you'd like to see me cover, you can either leave a comment down below or you can email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I say again, strokeassaulter at gmail.com. And if you happen to see someone either around you or, or yourself starting to become befuddled or confused and it comes out of nowhere, starting to have vision issues, right? Um, blurry vision, gray vision, vision only in one eye, and it comes out of nowhere. Uh, facial droop, right? Again, come out of nowhere. Uh, the inability to raise both arms equally effectively at all. The inability to smile equally effectively at all. Uh, speech issues, stuttering, slurred speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, inability to stand unaided, general body weakness or weakness on one side, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.